with waist length braids and a most unusual name, you can't go through life without calling some attention to yourself. But that's just her plan. Teens list her alongside Michael Jackson as a role model. Yet her shows deserve their R rating. But then there's a lot that's ironic and surprising about our final guest. A welfare mother turned millionaire. Her hobby is antiquing. Her real name is Karen. You know her as Whoopi Goldberg. And this comedic actress has a serious side that I'll bet you've never seen. And who in Chelsea ever thought they thought that they would see the little book up on the stage at Broadway? <laughs> Whoopi's been taking bows on stages since she was eight and growing up on New York's West Side, taking bows as an actress, not the comedian most people see her as. Most of her professional acting career was spent in her now adopted home of San Francisco. The city celebrated that fact with a star on their walk of fame. Whoopi starred in her first solo show in San Francisco. The show got noticed by a Broadway producer who invited her to write and star on the stage of New York's Lyceum Theater. She created a one-woman show with a cast of five, a foul-mouthed junkie, a surfer valley girl who gets PG. And they go, I am totally like PG. And he goes, are you in a movie? And like, I don't get it. <laughs> And I go, no, I'm totally like with child, like Mary was with Jesus, except like I do know who the father was. <laughs> and like a black a child, he dreams of being door. white, so a handicapped woman, and a Jamaican who comes to America to be a housekeeper. I mean, with really each character, the humor me. carries a message, the pain of a teen who attempts a home style abortion. Like I just messed it up, you know, I just like really messed it up. I'm not going to be able to have kids and I'm not freaked out about it, you know. A confused child who thinks she needs to look like they do on TV. Because I'm going to have blonde hair, blue eyes, and I'm going to be white. <laughs> I am. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because they said on TV, all you got to do is go to the Thomas' office, and he got blue eyes in his desk drawer. And then the Broadway audiences loved it. HBO made it into a special. And Whoopi made it into an album that won her a Grammy. Another producer-director now took notice of her. This one, Steven Spielberg. He gave her her first movie role, that of Seely in The Color Purple. The performance was awarded the Golden Globe for Best Actress and an Academy Award nomination. Her first comedy film was her most successful, Jumpin' Jack Flash, back in 1985. Critics cringe at her choice of movie roles since. She's headlined a string of forgettables, Burglar and Fatal Beauty, and one called Telephone that she sued to have pulled from theaters. Now, no one, no actor, sits around with two piles of scripts, a caca pile and, like, a gold pile, and says, oh, let me make the caca movie. <laughs> no one says that. No one does that. That's, you know, you have to understand that. Nobody does that. Nobody sets out to make a bad movie. Yeah. Now Whoopi's back where she started, on stage, with a 12-city tour of a new one-woman show called Living on the Edge of Chaos. She brought some of her familiar characters and some new ones as well to Atlanta last week. She rocked them at the Fox with her humor that teaches and even preaches a bit but always leaves them with something to think about. Now, when you're speaking to your maid, or as they rather be called, your cleaning person, if you ask them to watch your child, don't say things like, oh, Estrella, el watch the baby, oh, por favor. Why do you have to base your humor in social consciousness? Because that's what God has deemed me to do. 
Dad sort of looked at me and said, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you a little bit of a voice. You are my jester. You'll keep me abreast of what's going on in the world, and I'll, I'll kind of guide you. And he's always uh, allowed me to, to, to point things out in a way that was acceptable to people who may not have been ready to hear things. What's the root of this? I mean, does it come from your mom? Does it come from your dad? Does it come from the times? I mean... <laughs> that's, that's the root. Funny enough, I'm not a religious person. God periodically says to me, this is something you need to deal with. You need to really deal with. And, the, and I tell people this and they think I'm kind of crazy. But uh, rather than risk being burned at the stake like Joan of Arc, I won't say their voices, but there are things which inspire me. She was inspired that afternoon by a visit to the King Center with her boyfriend, Eddie. She was honored there by Coretta Scott King for her social activism both on and off the stage. She is to be commended for her commitment to improving the quality of life of what Dr. King called the least of these. I come here. And I look at pictures, and I think about Martin Luther King, who had a dream, and he changed the world. I mean, he really changed the world. And then I start thinking, you know, I could do that. I could change the world. And then I see little kids thinking, well, if you can change the world, I can change the world. And then I start getting hopeful. And then I start becoming verbal. And then I hit the road. That road has taken her to benefit concerts for the homeless. Where did you get this? Where did you get this? I live in it. <laughs> you live in this? This is too fast. And she's been active in the AIDS issue and has been honored for her work. It all has to do with my fear that apathy is setting in. It is so important to me to see the world survive. I know you have a daughter. How old is she now? She's 14. She's 14? Mm-hmm. Her mom sometimes does the F word and others. Mm -hmm. How do you raise a child, because this is your profession, mm -hmm. but how does the mother side of you jive with the actress, sometimes blue comedy side of you with your child? Well, you know, Alex is very smart and she understands that words are words and it is what you put behind them now what other parents think of of the way she's raised i mean she doesn't walk around saying f morning and f there and f air and f there you know she's not like that but i make no bones i have no embarrassment about these words because they are only words That's you know what. people expect you to be funny all the time because they see that character i have no sense of humor it's true. I'm, things go over my head. I'm very dense in that way. I have no sense of humor. Well, what makes you funny? I have no idea. That's why I can't call myself a comic. I could kill a joke like this. The, you know, the secret of comedy. You have to ask me this question. Say, Whoopi, what's the secret? So, Whoopi, what's the secret Timing. of comedy? <laughs> <laughs> See, you gotta, it's like, yeah, that's, that's what happens with me, do you know? And, and I'll laugh like a minute later. <laughs> People tell me jokes and I look at them and I go, oh, yeah, 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 And they look like, what's the matter with you? You know? It's strange. God's joke on me. <laughs> Your hair. That's the other thing people I, ask me. I was going around saying, what things do you want me to ask Whoopi Goldberg? The other was, "Your hair. Is it really dreadlocked? No, it's braided. It's braided and it's all for convenience. You know, there's a couple of real interesting cases going on about women who are fired for wearing braids and I I find that real offensive too I mean I don't want to comb my hair I hate combing my hair it's something I've been it's that baths I don't like baths <laughs> I take them because it's people want you to showers I don't like them you know psycho killed showers for me <laughs> you know you have to, there has to be a see-through curtain and 50, 11 people outside talking to me, saying everything is fine before I will step behind a shower. When she does step from those frightful showers, the clothes she puts on sometimes create controversy. On opening night at the Fox, her character Fontaine talked about being turned away from the restaurant at Atlanta's downtown Ritz-Carlton. So, like, I come to, you know, talk to people here and hang, and I tried to get something to eat yesterday. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, they have a policy which, you know, uh, uh, says that you have to be dressed a certain way in order to eat in there. It's sort of like an all-men's club or or an uh, uh, all-women's club or an all-wasp uh, club or an all-black club. Those clubs are wrong to me. I think those are wrong. Anything that perpetuates a uh, separatist attitude to me is very offensive. You have a fantastic figure, but you hide it. No, I don't hide it. I'm comfortable. I don't need to show it. You want to know fantastic figure? Cheryl's got a fantastic figure. My body is the kind of body where, on occasion, I'll show you. You know, just so you don't get uppity on me. You know, just so you don't think that I'm not on top of it. But there's no reason for me to, to, to like, strut around because the people who need to know do. And now, finally, the trivia that everybody wants to know. Whoopi Goldberg. Mm -hmm. Is Whoopi for making Whoopi or Whoopi as in joy? Well... I don't know if you're going to be able to use this, but it, it has to do with the whoopee cushions and the sounds that they make. I have been known on occasion to pass a little gas <laughs> because you cannot hold it in. I have ulcers. And so because of that sound, I make on occasion... <laughs> That is where the name Whoopi came from because people say, you're like a Whoopi cushion. It's like every five minutes, it's like... <laughs> you know? and that, she is full of surprises. The funny lady who says she's not funny, who can make you laugh and think seriously at the same time. Out there battling the issues of the day with a funny bone, like a new wave, funky clothed David taking on Goliath. You know, that kind of stupid stuff, dreams really do come true. I'm from the low west side, darling. And yes, I know. I know. And who in Chelsea ever thought they thought that they would see the little whoop up on the stage at Broadway? <laughs> Whoopi has two new movies that will be out in the fall, Clara's Heart and Homer and Eddie. And she's just signed a contract with Hanna-Barbera to do an animated cartoon series.